All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Grand Finals continues here in this best of seven for the ISO Holiday Brawl. Spawning here in the top right corner of the map, it's going to be Invasion's Blue Terran, Gumiho. The bottom left as the Red Protoss. It's Lobo. All right. I don't know if he's got any tricks up his sleeve, but we did pray and cross our fingers for cross spawns. And once you know it, we get cross spawns. So that's pretty darn neat. Uh, I, I think as far as this one could play out, I really want to see, like, as much as I want to see a little bit of his macro, I want to see a game seven more. So part of me is like, dude, do something dirty. Just shut Gumiho down and give us map number seven. I am actually super expecting a one base with a mind drop from Gumiho. Yeah, I mean, he, actually, you know what? I wonder, maybe not, because he did try it once. It didn't work out so well. And, of course, he might have clued into the fact that Lilibo may have been watching uh, his games versus Hearthstone. Which is maybe why he's been less inclined to do it this time around. Plus, it's the whole, like, it's expected, so let me not do it. Yeah. It's Nimbus. The natural. The, all of that. There's so much, I feel Nimbus, whatever reason, I don't know what it is, there's something about this map that's, like, radioactive, and, like, it messes with the metagame of people so hardcore. You're like, oh, one small choke to seal off two bases? Better go for an eight pool. <laughs> <laughs> It's because it's up in the air, you know, in the clouds, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, everyone's a little bit lightheaded coming into yeah, this. Yeah, it's lightheaded. Hey, speaking of, speaking of the holiday brawl, where's that Easter egg down here? There we go, it's the Christmas tree! If you guys haven't seen it before, this is like the hidden Easter egg of Nimbus. What is, wait, what is on it? Uh, the ornaments are shaped to something, aren't they? Uh, they kind of no, look like gas maybe capsules not. or something. Maybe it just shapes. <laughs> Anyways, it's just like, this is completely irrelevant, trivial BS, guys, but it is kind of cool. Most map makers do tend to hide at least one Easter egg per map um, on every single one. So, for example, on Overgrowth, you've got the Hidden Kitchen in plain sight. Uh, on King Station, you've got the Lich King. Uh, we had all these hidden barrels before on a Yansu. There's lots of cool little things to look for on the map, and there you guys go. There's your <laughs> Christmas gift for Bay Street TV to you. The Holiday Brawl, you now get to learn about the Christmas tree. Well, Zarbica was right, and she's awesome. So everyone bow down. You don't want your game. One, <laughs> of, those, going. one of those things is correct. That I'm awesome. Now you're like, well, I really hope he doesn't do Widow Mines because I want to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, go for Hellions, go for Hellions. Well, the Stargate, I think, is still going to work for this. If he does open with the Oracle, that's detection. So the Widow Mines won't get out of hand. Right. And if he hits hard enough, soon enough, maybe he goes past the Widow Mines and doesn't stay defensive, Gilmeo might not actually have those Widow Mines to defend in the mineral line. And if that's the case, if your whole army is across the map, the Oracle's going to shred the SCVs. This is exactly what happened on Foxtrot. Remember how poorly that went for Gumiho. Uh, so, I don't know. That might be the same case here. But I really love Lobo's positioning on that Stargate. Like, yeah, even if a your Reaper own came natural. In. Yeah, because like, even if a Reaper come in, it ducks up here and it would see no Nexus and then like leave. There's no reason to keep going more and more and more north. But, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. We'll see. I really don't know how bad it's going to be. The other core is leaving across the map. He did this last time as well. So the concern is there's no Photon Overcharge at home. Mm. That's yeah, but it went so well last uh, last time. This, these builds crossed these exact builds, so kind of gonna give this one a little bow, uh, especially if he scouts it. Like the militia core can definitely no no, it wouldn't scout over the medevac would push out. So never mind. Be close though. Oh, and there we go. Sees the nexus and walks away as predicted. So doesn't see the stargate. But for Gumio, question marks have got to go down. Where you're like, well, I didn't scout behind the mineral lines, but what is he doing? I don't see anything just yet. Uh, a bunker what, for the Reaper. That's kind of cute. Oh, it's for his Marines and stuff, too. Like, if he just pushes, like, right on the front. Oh, that's right. He didn't go for Reaper. I'm retarded. Pardon me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. He didn't go for Reaper. I just assumed he did, because, like, every Terran player scouts for the Reaper, right? But, right. Uh, I don't know if there was a Wood of Mine left at home. I think it's across the map. Nope, never mind. There it is. Hidden inside the Mineral Lines. It does pick up nice. the Oracle. But this, yeah, this also... is now very different than Foxtrot. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. This Hellion oh. is already frying probes alive. Yo! Lobo, no, don't fall apart here. Be so useless. <laughs> not, not this, not this game. Not in what is your possibly your last life. Not like this. Well, the Oracle actually clears up the Hellion, but now he's gonna deal with the Marines. And if he caught them coming out one at a time, like as they're funneling out of the dropship, this would have gone different. Or the medevac, rather, this would have gone much differently. But he picks off most of them. Two Marines left for damage. Not that scary. Meanwhile, the mothership core has been dealing a lot of damage, but the SCVs were actually repairing each other during this. Uh, toward the end, yeah. A little bit of a kiss. Oh, but this hell yeah, he mineral walks through to get on top of it, but it stacks the probes for the shot. Little bow, not like this. It's not gonna be like, like this. this. I'm sorry, GG. <laughs> <laughs> no! 
Uh, congratulations to Gilbio. He will win this series 4-2. to two. Um, We will not get that ace match that we were hungering for so desperately so badly, but... Gumio walks out of this with $500. Uh, Little Bo finishes second place. It's $300 for him. Not too bad. But uh, damn if he didn't put on a good show. Him and Harston both. Like, when we saw foreigners in the finals, I think a lot of people immediately just rolled their eyes. Um, or the semifinals, pardon me. But both, uh, well, Little Bo proved he could play well against the Korean. Harston almost took Gumio. I mean, tangled quite well in that series, too. But uh, at the end of the day, guys. It's going to be Gumio wins the tournament, so big congratulations for winning the ISO Holiday Brawl. And, uh, wow, that was, uh, <laughs> that was an awesome, awesome best of seven. It was an awesome semifinals, and of course, yesterday was a really long day, but it was a really awesome one as well. Thank you guys so much for joining us for it, though. This has been ridiculous and awesome. Uh, shout out to Roy Grantham. I didn't get an email notification, but he says he's supporting my Patreon on Twitter, so I'll believe him. Thank you very much for that, uh, that support. <laughs> uh, we will, of course, will contact these players and figure out how they're going to get paid because, well, weird as it is, we're not the ones who's paying them for once, so that's kind of a. <laughs> we'll make sure it gets done, though, guys. Kind of like Guardian Angels from afar, the casting of Bay Street TV. Um, but yeah, so we're going to play a small ad break. We'll play the ISO ads one last time. We'll come back, we'll say our goodbyes, and we'll talk about what's going on tomorrow with the show match of Pulse. Uh, so stick around, guys. We'll see you soon.